Welcome to another edition of Discover Tinley, where we talk about to people and, and organizations in Tinley Park and highlight the great things that are happening in town. And as we all know, Tinley Park is a great place in which to live, and we enjoy bringing these programs to you every month. My name is Ron Centeni. I'll be your host today. And uh, a couple things coming up. Uh, the summer is getting uh, getting to a close pretty soon now, although we're still getting some hot weather here. And I hope you're enjoying the summer in Tinley Park and uh, the music in the park and some of the things going on downtown and especially the uh, car shows and everything like that a lot of things happening in town here so uh we thought we'd take another shot at going out in town in Tinley Park and seeing some of the things that are happening out beside just our studio and today we've got a pretty neat organization that's been around Tinley Park for quite a while that does quite a service for Tinley Park and that's handling our pets and the uh, pets that are taken by people and adoption and that's the PAWS, the People and Animal Welfare Society over on 191st Street and we have with us today the two very, very important people in the organization, the President Peggy Grimms. Peggy, <laughs> well, <laughs> how you doing? I'm doing fine. How about you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and John Green, who's one of the directors. John, welcome to Discover Tinley. Hello, Ron. Thank you for having us back uh, once again on Tinley Park TV. Oh, yeah. Well, PAWS is always quite a, an organization down here to do a lot of things. Now, you're president of the board. First, what is PAWS' job? What, what are you here for? Why are you around? Uh, we're here for the safety and security of all the animals, whether they're strays, give-ups, lost, and to find them all good homes and to help them and whatever medical care they may need, we provide it for them. Wow, you do a lot. <laughs> we do a lot. We do everything we can for the animals. Um, we never turn, around an a turn away an animal unless we don't have space for it. Uh, we are a non-kill shelter, which means that we do not put down animals for space. We don't have space. We can't take an animal in. That's a good idea. I'm very good at it. How, about how many animals do you think you, you take care of usually per month or in a year? Annually, we have about 1,200. Holy cow. <laughs> 1,200? Right. We have about the same numbers of uh, cats and dogs. Uh, right now, we're going through kitten season. So we have about 60 kittens around that are either in the shelter or um, in foster homes right now because we don't have room for them here. Oh, wow. And we happen to be in the kitten room, or the cat room, right? This right. Is, uh, what room are we in now? What do you do with the cats in this room? Uh, these are the adult cats. These are more of the ones that have been here for a long time, so they get the luxury suites with the windows, so they get to look outside during the day. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Uh, John, what's uh, your job here? What do you? What's your role here at PAWS? Well, I have many um, functions here at the um, shelter. My main uh, function here at the shelter is to do uh, fundraisers, um, and special events uh, for the shelter to raise money. We are um, own, we're operated um, by donations and fundraisers that we do uh, in the community itself. Yeah, I was going to ask you, how is it funded, and uh, where, do you, where does your money come from? Obviously, that's quite an operation you've got here. Where does your money come from? Some of our um, money is um, donated um, by individuals uh, in the local community. Also, we host uh, several fundraisers throughout the year. Our last main event was our dinner dance uh, held in April. Okay. I was going to ask you this later, but let's even br briefly talk about it now. you got a couple coming up soon, don't you? <laughs> yes, we have um, two special events. Uh, last year, PAWS uh, celebrated their 40th anniversary. So what uh, the Village of Tinley uh, Park thought is, let's do something special for PAWS. And we are honored um, to be able and to, uh, for the thought of Tinley uh, asking us to do a special event. So they said, let's do a parade. So last year uh, was our first uh, pet parade. It went wonderful. Uh, we had so much uh, support from the local community, um, from local uh, shelters, and uh, other groups uh, that attended. Wow. And when is it this year now? Uh, this year, uh, it is September 20th. Uh, lineup is on uh, at Central Middle School at 11.30. The parade kicks off at 12 o'clock. We are also hosting, once again, an after party after uh, the uh, parade itself. And what that is, um, it's a celebration of different groups coming together and promoting uh, their group uh, to make these um, uh, animals more adoptable, to make um, a difference in our community. You know, we're all doing uh, the same job, so uh, we'd like to work together and uh, promote 
animals getting adopted. We also have a big fundraiser uh, September 25th. Um, it's our uh, third year. It's called Bark and Brew. It's held at Gaelic Park, and what it is, it's a local uh, craft beer uh, tasting. It's $30 to get in to eat and drink. It's $15 just to eat. We're having anywhere from 15 to 20 uh, brewers come in. They are all donating um, their beer uh, for this. We hope to make over $12,000. Last year, um, we raised uh, $12,600. We're hoping uh, to make uh, some more money like we did last year. So uh, keep your fingers crossed. Well, let's hope people can. How, how would they get tickets for that now? Uh, what they can do is uh, it'll be shortly online with all the information. Uh, also, any fundraiser event that we do will uh, be in our website. It'll also be on our Facebook page, and it'll also be out on the Kias out front. Um, and these are local businesses. Um, take example, 350 Brewery, that is donating um, their beer because um, they know Paws is a great group. And they said, you know, how can we help support the shelter? Let's make a difference um, between a local business and a local uh, f uh, community fundraiser. Wow. Well, let's hope good luck and uh, hope you uh, go out and uh, watch the parade on the, what, the 21st, you said, right? The 20th. 20th. Okay, at the 20th and down Oak Park Avenue. And uh, Peggy, well, last thing I want to find out, what exactly what some services you do provide here? What are some things you do for, for the pets here? Well, we provide full medical services for any animal that comes into the shelter. Uh, we then naturally go to get them adopted. We also provide spay-neuter certificates, which are low-cost certificates that anybody from the uh, community or anywhere can buy, and they go to our local vets. Um, we have memberships for everybody here. Um, we do tours of the shelter. Um, we go out to schools. So we provide a lot for the community in general. You sure do. Well, <laughs> congratulations on the fine work you guys do. And uh, we're going to take a little walk through here, a little see some of the other parts of the Paws Shelter here. So stay with us. We have with our next person we're going to talk to today is a very important part, plays a very important role in the Paws Shelter here. And that's taking care of the, the medical aspects of the, uh, the animals here, the dogs and cats and other animals. And we're very fortunate to have the veterinarian that handles Paws here, Dr. Soleil. Thank you for coming to Discover Tinley. Good to be here. Thank you. Yeah. As, a, as your veterinarian, what, what is your role here? What kind of things do you help the shelter with? So myself and other animals or other veterinarians at Midwest Animal Hospital, we will, uh, it's, it's a multi-tier uh, way that we do things with PAWS. Uh, it, first and foremost, if they ever have a, a question or a, a need from us, they'll call us out here and, and we'll, we'll get over here and make sure that we can tend to their needs, check out the dogs, do physical exams. Uh, and any procedures that are necessary for the animal. Uh, and then a lot of times they'll bring dogs into us, whether they need simple procedures, spays, neuters, uh, physical exams, medications. Uh, and then also when they adopt a dog to an owner, their first visit is through us. So they will, they'll come bring into us and just make sure that, you know, we get a clean bill of health. And if anything needs to be addressed, it can be done within the first week or so of ownership for that new owner. Oh, I didn't realize. So they, uh, when they adapt, they have to go through the vet to get a, get a clearance from you, then, huh? Hey, well, it's it's highly recommended, uh, and it's yeah, and we, and we provide that at at no charge to the owner, just so we can make sure that when they do bring home that new pet, that it's it's healthy, and and if not, we can address it at that point. What kind of things you're running into here at the shelter with the animals? Any difficulties or the illnesses that are causing any concerns here? Uh, not so much anymore. Back in the springtime, we had canine influenza that was it was pretty significant. I mean, we all over the area was really significant. It started in the Chicagoland area, and then it, it found its way here. And, and unfortunately, Paws was hit pretty hard with it, but... Uh, they seem to be on the ball with getting us involved right away. And, you know, once, twice a day, doctors from Midwest Animal Hospital were over here making sure that uh, the dogs were being treated, they were healthy, and if they had any questions, I mean, constantly there are new dogs popping up with symptoms. We just made sure that, it, that those matters were being addressed in a timely fashion. Wow. What can people look for now? How should they look at their animals to see if the dogs do need some kind of a medical care? What kind of medical situation should they be taking care of with their pets? Well, right now in the summertime, it's it's going to be a prevention is going to be key. Uh, things like flea and tick preventatives are going to be crucial for that dog. Uh, vaccination, uh, you know, summertime people like to go swimming with their dog, take their dog swimming. Uh, things like leptospirosis, I mean, that's a really bad disease that the dog can contract. Very easily preventable. 
trouble with vaccination. Uh, if owners ever have any questions whether their dog is vaccinated, should be vaccinated, contact your veterinarian. I, that, I mean, that's it, that's the biggest uh, driving point that I want to uh, make clear is if any owners have any kind of questions, talk to your veterinarian. I mean, it's, it's usually a pretty simple answer that the veterinarian can figure out. And if they don't know the answer, they'll get you in touch with somebody that does. What are kind of the mandatory vaccinations that people should really always have their vets get or their their, their pets to get? Well, and, and that's going to vary dog to dog. I mean, it's not cookie cutter, and that's oh. kind of where your the owner and the veterinarian will kind of uh, come to a decision. I mean, rabies, distemper. I mean, those are going to be the two uh, mainstays. I mean, those are those are diseases that you you have to be vaccinated for. Uh, Bordetella too. You know, the canine cough. Now around this area, every dog should be vaccinated for canine influenza. Uh, you know. I talked about the leptospirosis Lyme disease. I mean, the, the tick population is really high in here. So uh, it's going to be a, a multifocal approach where you do the flea and tick prevention, you do the Lyme vaccination. Uh, things like that are going to be really important that you uh, talk to your veterinarian about. Wow. Are there difference between cats and dogs as the kind of medical treatment you should uh, be aware of that people should be doing? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, the, and there too, the the doctor will be able to help you out with that. Uh, cats have their own specific diseases and, you know, little little things to watch out for. Uh, might be a little more difficult for, you know, an owner to notice in a cat because cats can be a little more solitary than dogs. They might, might not be as social. So something like that is going to be important that even though, you know, the cat's, you know, hiding in the, in the basement like the cat always hides in the basement, doesn't mean that the cat doesn't need to come in for its regular visits. Uh, that way a veterinarian can do the, the regular checkup and make sure that everything's still going okay and if not again we can address it early wow well i appreciate you going you're taking telling us all these things these are very important i don't i'm not a pet the only pets i have are some goldfish in my pond in the backyard so i don't have any but it's very important and especially in the summertime are there any particular things people should do in the summertime with this heat we're having here yeah uh, you know the big thing is if you wouldn't leave your small ch child out outside for an extended period of time yeah, you shouldn't be doing that with your pet. I mean, that's I think that's a very, very uh, simple way to put it for my owners, uh, especially, you know, that they talk about, you know, leaving a child in the backseat of a car when with the windows rolled up. Same thing as a dog. Those temperatures can escalate right away. Uh, you just want to make sure that you're you're cognizant of the heat. I mean, dogs, they have a whole, you know, coat of hair. So you want to make sure that they're not succumbing to heat stroke. Um, and then there again, you know, the vaccinations, if we're going to be playing in, in ponds and lakes, uh, just be sure that that they're going to be prepared and, and, and vaccinated for the things that can arise should that be the case with your dog. Well, thanks for coming and helping us out, and uh, especially being of service to the Paws Animal Welfare Center of uh, Timley Park. Thanks for your service. Uh, it's our pleasure. Well, we're going to another section of the Paws Animal Shelter here, and if you can see, uh, if you're going to look around and look at the cats, uh, look around at the kittens here. They were in the kitten cage here, the kitten room here, and we have with us one of our volunteers here. You are? Ryan. Ryan? Yep. And I'm a Wednesday evening volunteer. I work with the cats and the dogs. Um, started off working with the cats, and now I'm uh, upgraded and working with the dogs as well. Oh, that's an upgrade. Huh? Yes, sir, it is. <laughs> okay, that's good. Uh, now, what do you do? Uh, what do you do with the animals? Um, well, we take care of the animals. We clean their cages when we come in. Um, we make sure they're fed, and then we uh, show them off to the public so that the way they can get adopted. Wow, how many how many kittens do we have here? We got quite a few. Uh, looks we like. got about fifteen to twenty kittens here in our room. Uh, it's hard to keep track of them all because they come in and go so fast. Well, are they really they're really adoptable very very quickly? Yes, sir. Usually when they come in, we usually give them about two weeks to do medical on them, and then um, they're up for adoption after that point. Wow, and people adopt them that that fast around here? Huh? Oh yeah, kittens are our biggest uh, adoptions. They're uh, the cutest ones out of uh, all of them. It, it's a little downfall because some of the older cats don't get looked at as much, but um, the kittens do go quicker than others. Now, what have you got in your hand here? What? What? Who is this or what is this? Uh, this is Tippy. He's an eight-week-old kitten. Uh, came in on the 13th, and he was put up for adoption two days ago. Uh, he's a very friendly cat. Um, loves to play with all the other cats in here. Gets along well. And when you want to pick him up and hold him on your lap, he's a very friendly lap cat as well. Do they stay that way when they get to be a little older? Uh, most cats do. Um, some of them find their own little niche when they go to their homes uh, where they kind of want to be left alone in certain spots or certain times of the day. But for the most part, they do stay very friendly. How long have you been a volunteer here? Uh, I started in 2006. Oh, my goodness. Yes. You've been around for a while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what keeps you in motor? What keeps you coming back here? Uh, the love of the animals and seeing the faces on the uh, 
adopt, adopting families when they uh, bring a kitten or a cat home or when they bring a dog home. Well, I wish you luck, and thanks for all your help. That's nice. Congratulations on volunteering all those years, and keep up the good work with your kittens and your dogs. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, into the kitten shelter here. All right, we're at the medical room here, one of the uh, special rooms here at this facility, and one of the volunteers does a lot of work in the medical room. Who are you, and what do you do here? Um, my name is Candy Staros. I'm one of the volunteers, and I do I work with all the dogs, but I also um, help with the medical with the medical team. And what kind of things do you do in this room? Here? Um, we immunize the dogs. We can um, give them medication when they're sick. We start them on medication. We weigh them. We check them in. Um, make sure that all of their immunizations are done they do have to go to the vet to get their rabies shot um, we're not uh, able to do that but we also take our sick dogs in here and we'll examine them and sometimes the vet will actually come in here um, when we had the canine flu this medical room was um, full of IV solutions and doctors and um, the medical team working to take care of the dogs but you were busy. Yeah, we were very busy. We give respiratory treatments in here as well if some of the dogs have kennel cough. Wow. How long have you been a volunteer here? Four years. Four years. Wow. Why? And why? Why? Because I love dogs and I can't have this many at my house, so I have to use the dogs here. <laughs> wow. Well, you're doing a tremendous job. Thanks for Adela Ruby doing the medical room here. In the medical room at the paw shelter. Well, we're outside here in the uh, cage area here in the uh, little uh, animal shelter here out in the back. And uh, we have with us here one of the volunteers again. And, and again, uh, PAWS has a lot of volunteers. I think they have over 200 volunteers. So they have a lot of volunteers. And we have with us here one of our special volunteers with a very special dog here. And you are? Beth. And, okay. <laughs> and who do we have here? Jimbo. Jimbo. Okay. What kind of dog is this? He's a pit bull. Oh, is it really? Yeah. I thought they were smaller than that. No, they're all sizes, oh, yeah. big and small. And what, what do you do here with the animal? What kind of things do you do with the animals here, and uh, what's your role here? Play with them, put them out in the play yard, walk them, feed them, socialize them. Oh, wow. <coughs> How many hours would you say you spend here? Uh, I, I come two different shifts, so I probably spend 10 hours. Oh, not at one time. No, 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 no. I come Monday afternoon and Saturday night. Oh, okay. Saturday night? Mm -hmm. That's a good time to come. <laughs> yeah. And what kind of things do you run into with the dogs here? What kind of stuff that they, uh, do they uh, require attention to? Uh, I don't know. Just don't just know. taking care of them? Uh, just, you, do you wash them? Do you clean them? I mean, do you uh, give them yeah, baths? Yeah, they come in dirty. I took 40 ticks off a dog last week. Oh um, you clean them up. Play with them, um, feed them, try to meet all their needs. Okay. Make sure if they have any, see if they have diarrhea. I don't know. You know, just make sure they don't get sick. I understand uh, you have to clean up their messes, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Clean up after them. Okay. That's why I wouldn't probably be a good volunteer here. <laughs> ah, it's no big deal. Okay. Okay. How long have you been a volunteer? Uh, I think about five or six years. Well, why are you volunteering here? Uh, I love the dogs. I want to see them get a good home. You have dogs of your own? Pets of your own? Three. I just adopted one from here. You have three at home? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good for you. Well, thanks a lot for all your work, and thanks for volunteering at that pause here, and take good care of Jimbo. <laughs> yeah, he's a good boy. Okay. I hope he gets adopted soon. Okay. Thanks. Jimbo. Well, our next guest is, and who, who are you and who is this? Um, hi, my name is Susan, and this is Bella. She's a four-year-old shepherd that's been here for about two weeks. Oh, two, oh wow. Where, you know where it came from? Um, I understand that the couple gave her up. They were moving to California. Oh, wow. And uh, they couldn't take her to California with her. I don't know. I wouldn't want to go to California either. I don't think so. <laughs> now, what's your experience with uh, the dogs here? And, and you have some pets at home, right? I do. Um, uh, my experiences here is I've been here for a year and a half. I actually started volunteering um, here because of my friend Beth, who you just interviewed. <laughs> uh, she convinced me to start coming, and I absolutely love it. Um, Why? What's so special about working here? It seems like you got a lot of barking dogs around here. 
<laughs> um, yes, there's a lot of barking dogs. <laughs> I, I, I love it. Um, I love that I contribute, that I get to come and take care of these wonderful animals every day. And I get to make their life just a little bit better while I'm here for the day. And um, I, I, I don't know. I just I love contributing to that. Now, what do you, you what do you have at home, and what's your experience with the dog you have at home? Oh, uh, what do I have at home? Uh, I just rescued a German Shepherd. Um, I rescued her. I got her for Thanksgiving, like the weekend of Thanksgiving. I, I got her from a place in Wisconsin called Rutenhaus German Shepherds, and she trains for the military. She trains for search and rescue, and my dog at home looks exactly like her. Um, so she had a little issues and um, I was supposed to just foster her for a short period of time I, until she could get to her to train her and uh, I'm a foster failure. <laughs> so I kept her. <laughs> she's about uh, 16 months now and she's a wonderful addition to our family. I, I just love her. I love that I rescued because the couple gave her up and um, they, you know, they had, uh, she's got issues but she's, she's wonderful. Don't most pets have issues? <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do have some. <laughs> of course, most people and children have issues too, so it's no different, right? I was say, married 25 years, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're used to issues. I'm used to issues, yes. <laughs> oh, now, how, how old is Bella? Uh, Bella is four years old. Okay. She's four. And she's very smart, uh, very loving, as you could see. Um, walks very well. She's very smart, very trained already. She can do yeah. several things. Like, yeah. like what, maybe? Um, I think she can uh, lay on command, sit, give paw, stay. Um, yeah. So this this, this dog is up for adoption, you said, right? Yes, she is up for adoption. You know how how regular are the adoptions here? How how usual is that? Is that a pretty regular thing here? Yes, we have a lot of adoptions here, and that's why it's so rewarding to be here because I see such a turnover here. Um, the dogs don't stay here forever. They actually do get wonderful homes, and we see wonderful people. Today, a lady came back with a beagle that she just adopted, and this beagle is so happy, and the woman's so happy to have her. Um, so it's nice to see the success stories here. And believe me, they get wonderful care here at Paws. Well, sounds like volunteers like you help with that out. So <laughs> congratulations on doing that. Uh, all right, you. Susan and Bella, one of our uh, present guests here. <laughs> thank, right, you. thank you. All right, John, we're out here in the outdoor area, and now you see the uh, volunteers. What are they kind of doing out here? What is, is this part of the regular routine? Yeah, uh, generally um, during the day, um, our dogs are uh, left out uh, with a volunteer um, to exercise them twice a day. We have an afternoon shift um, that uh, comes in, uh, cleans out the kennels, and they exercise the dogs. Also at night, we have a shift that basically does the same thing. Um, we want to get these um, dogs exercised. Uh, you know, very well, so um, they can get rid of some of that pent-up energy that they have. I bet. And you get a lot of dogs to walk here, too, don't you? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, we have approximately over 60 um, dogs in the kennel area itself and probably anywhere from 70 to 80 cats in the shelter itself at one time. The cats don't need walking, right? No, the cats don't need um, walking. And you also have to remember, too, um, we take in all Tinley Park strays. Um, we are uh, the collective shelter uh, for Tinley Park. All right, and you were talking about some special uses of some of the dogs that you do adopt. What are some of the special dogs that you do uh, take care of here? Well, um, in the um, past, we've uh, placed a couple different dogs throughout the com uh, community. Uh, probably the dog known uh, the best uh, from the shelter is Bugs. Uh, Bugs was one of our animals that uh, was in five different homes, and we worked with a, a training facility, Canine Tail Shakers, to bring his anxiety down, and now he's uh, my service dog. I have uh, MS, so uh, it's very unique that a um, dog came from a shelter and now is a uh, service dog. Did it require special training then? Uh, it did require special training. Uh, we collectively made a decision to um, donate him to Heartland Service Dogs out of Mokina, Illinois. They're a non-for-profit um, that donate their dogs to people that are in need of a service dog. A dog like that um, can take up to two years. Uh, he's considered what's a mobility assist dog, and the cost about $20,000. So it's extraordinary. Every 
probably um, four out of ten service dogs that are trained um, and bred to be a service dog actually make it. Um, so for a dog to come from a shelter and um, to be known in the community as much as he is is just remarkable. Wow, and that's probably something people don't realize that service dogs, they play a very important role in, in certain people's lives, as you know. And uh, it's a very important part that you play in providing dogs like that. Oh, he does. Uh, you know, um, many animals that are service dogs are people's um, eyes, they're um, people's ears. Uh, Bugs is what's considered a mobility assist dog. So he helps me um, walk. He helps with my stability to make sure um, that I don't fall. We've also placed um, a couple different dogs into a therapy situation. One of our volunteers adopted out a pit bull um, is now going to be used uh, for psychiatric uh, adolescent uh, services. We also, um, in the last two years, have placed a dog that's going to be a search and rescue dog that um, will uh, find cadavers um, so people can have closure in their life. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of stuff here. Now the, uh, the handlers are taking care of the dogs here. Are they just walking them? They're taking them a rest? And I understand one of the dogs here, uh, the uh, dog with the a lady with the light blue uh, shirt on, her dog has got a very uh, good name as far as I'm concerned, Wrigley. So we need to keep the uh, Cub fans happy here. So thanks for bringing Wrigley out here. <laughs> well, I'm a big Cubs fan um, too. So um, Wrigley, you know, is one of my uh, favorite names. And, you know, we're so happy to um, be provided this opportunity uh, from the village. This land was all um, donated uh, by the village uh, approximately uh, 20 years ago. And it's so important that the community gets involved in the shelter any way they, any way they can, um, donations, fundraisers, just making people um, more aware of these homeless animals in the Tinley Park um, community. That's what we're here for. That's what we depend on the um, community for. So it's a great relationship that we've been able to develop, especially um, with you guys. Um, you know, we've been on the program a couple different times, and it means the world to us because um, this gets our name out there. This gets our animals noticed. Let's get a last minute plug here for your events coming up in, in September. What are they again? Okay, uh, so we have September 20th, uh, the Pet Parade. It kicks off at 12 o'clock, downtown Tinley Park, uh, on the parade route. And September 25th is uh, Paws Bark and Brew. It's uh, held at Gaelic Park. Uh, tickets can um, be bought here at the shelter um, or online. So that's September 25th from 7 p.m. to 11. Wow, okay. So, uh, very good. Well, thanks for doing all you do here, John, and thanks for helping us out here and taking care of these nice dogs out here and the pets. You guys do a tremendous job at Paws. You keep up the good work. <laughs> well, thank you again for having us on. It's a great opportunity that you have been giving us. Again, thanks for watching Discover Tinley, and we'll see you next month. Thank <laughs> you.